Hello, I'd like to thank everyone for coming here today. Um, I will be the moderator. Um, I am also the, I guess, chairman of the Freedom of the Press Committee, so doing double duty here. Um, very briefly, um, I will make some introductions to the people we have here. Um, from my right down to the end is um, former Yomiri National News journalist, um, Hidehoshi Kiyotaki-san. I'm sure you're all familiar with him. Um, Tanaka Minoru-san, who is um, famous for investigative journalism in Japan and being sued by one of the most powerful nuclear fixers in the country and winning the lawsuit. Um, our lovely translator for the day, um, Lucy Birmingham, who is president of the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Um, and on that note, uh, very quickly, I will explain this, the system and why we're doing this a little bit. Then we will hear from Mr. Tanaka, and then Mr. Kiyotaki-san will speak. And after that, we'll take questions until 4 o'clock. So one of the first questions that we've been asked, even at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan internally, is why have a Freedom of Press Awards in Japan? Every year, Reporters Without Borders puts out a ranking of press freedom in the world. Um, in 2010, Japan was number 11. Since the, since the Abe coalition came to power, um, or the Abe Bonbon Jidai, we have seen press freedom in this country uh, rise. Well, actually, the only thing in this country that has sunk lower than, uh, and faster than press freedom in Japan is the value of the yen. The reporters on the border this year ranked Japan at a new low, dropping to places, uh, dropping two places to 61 out of 180 countries and territories, were one below Korea and several notches below Croatia. R reporters Without Borders explained the drop very succinctly um, as such. The state secrets law, the national diet adopted in, in late 2013, reduces government transparency on such key national issues as nuclear power and relations with the United States, now enshrined as taboos. Investigative journalism, public interest, and the confidentiality of journalist sources are all being sacrificed by legislators bent on ensuring that their country's image is spared embarrassing revelations. It's a very strange time in Japan where you have the administration naming newspapers they don't like and criticizing them, um, putting pressure on the media to report the way that they want. If you've been following the Hodo station debacle in the last couple of days, it's very apparent that the government did put pressure on um, television stations and, and they have in the past during the elections to report things the way that they want to report them. And that's really not the job of reporters. Our job is to report things as they are, to report the things the government doesn't want written, that, that companies don't want written. And that is probably one of the reasons that we felt it was time to have an award like this. Um, I myself have worked for a Japanese newspaper. Actually, Kyotaki-san was my boss for several years. Uh, not a very pleasant boss either. <laughs> but... Having worked in the Japanese media since 1993, I can, never, I can say honestly that I've never seen the Japanese media more fearful and more wimpy than they are now. Uh, I mean, it's a time when you have the Prime Minister of Japan criticizing the, uh, the Asahi Shimbun by name in public, and at the same time when Eriko Yamatani was brought to the FCCJ and was asked to, to renounce Zaito Kukai, a racist right-wing group also connected to the Yakuza, she said that it's not proper for public officials to renounce individual groups. Uh, there are scandals if, uh, in this administration that normally the newspapers would be all over and we're not touching them. Um, when the min education minister has ties to the Yakuza and it just floats by as a story of the day and no one pursues it, that's crazy. That's not the usual Japan that we all know and love. So the FCJ has taken a small step forward by launching the first annual Press of Freedom, Freedom of the Press Awards, which will be announced on May 3rd, World Press Day. There will be a specific award for investigative journalism, as well as an award for non-journalists who've contributed to freedom of information causes. You have a list of the judges uh, who will be evaluating the information in front of you. Um, the prizes are to confer due recognition upon journalists whose work represents the finest in defense of free speech, open society, and democratic accountability. Finally, we should say that while the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan is primarily comprised of foreign correspondents, many of our members are Japanese journalists, freelance journalists, um, uh, retired journalists who are working in the Japanese media. Um, and one of our duties as a organization in our charter is to promote the freedom of the press. Then ultimately, however, 
the, the, the goal of these awards is to recognize the media when they do their job, which is to inform the public of things that the people with power, whether that's government or corporations or utility companies, don't want them to know. And now we'll hear some remarks from Mr. Tanaka. Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us during your very busy schedules. My name is Minoru Takan Tanaka. I have been reporting on various uh, interests and so on related to security issues, defense, and the nuclear power industry as well for the past 20 years. And I have, of course, Mr. Kiyotake is here next to me today. However, we have very different experience in terms of our journalistic experience and also capacity in terms of our expression. So there is perhaps a gap between us, you could say. However, there is one particular thing which we have in common. What do you think this might be? Mr. Kiyotake, of course, was involved in the so-called Yomiuri slap and myself in the nuclear power slap. So from this position, if we consider our experience in this sense, we are in fact sitting on the same position at the table. In my personal case, in 2010, one of the managers involved within the nuclear village, as it is called, took me personally to court for an amount of compensation amount of 67 million Japanese yen. And it took uh, one year and several months for this manager or this managerial position person to withdraw this suit. And so I was struggling with dealing with the uh, trial for throughout this time. The proliferation of such slap lawsuits is dependent upon the times and also the situation of authority within that particular era. During the Abe administration, I believe that this freedom of the press is, or these slap suits are really, really um, shrinking the freedom of the press that we have here in Japan. The special secrecy law, which was uh, passed in December of last year, has very much resulted in an increase speed of the self-censorship by the media here in Japan. And in the uh, rankings which were announced of the freedom of the press by the Reporters Without Borders in February of this year, Japan has fallen to a position of 61 amongst 180 countries and regions throughout the world. Having been appointed as one of the judges for this award, I am not able to forget, I really very much have in mind the murdered journalist, Mr. Goto Kenji. And so I will hold these words, I am Kenji, in my heart as we are considering this. Thank you very much. And so to briefly explain the slap lawsuit for those of you who may not be familiar, the strategic lawsuits against public participation. This is a kind of suit which is brought upon by those in power, whether it is in terms of having financial power, authority from the state or corporation and so on, to bring civil or criminal suits against <coughs> individuals, often under the name of defamation, as a way to obstruct their impression. Part of this is also the fact that these lawsuits drag on for a very long time, putting a great burden on those who are being taken to court about this, both uh, financially, in terms of their time, in terms of working with the lawyers for the lawsuit and so on as well. So this is a form of bullying to try and keep journalists' mouth shut, for example, on such issues. And now we'll hear some remarks from Kiyotaki-san, a uh, journalist who I respect very much um, and was quite a mentor as I was learning the ropes of being a journalist. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, certainly not the most likable people, but has us a knack for telling the truth, which is so rare in the Japanese media or any media these days. I'm not quite happy with Jake's introduction, however, I will proceed. I think I was an extremely uh, nice person, however. However, I believe very strongly that the reporting and the, the act of journalism must be very strict, and this is how we are able to get good results. I am actually currently undertaking six lawsuits at the moment, and I have two next week. However, I am also within this time using my time every day to be able to pursue or uh, make pursuit of freedom of the press. I have actually in the past held a press conference here after I had accused who could be called one of the kings of Japanese media, Mr. Watanabe. <coughs> and so many of you may be familiar with me or assume that I am someone involved within the baseball field as was related in this particular case and also associate me with this particular case with Mr. Watanabe. However, I also have an experience of working for many decades within the uh, social reporting division of the newspaper. And so I worked for many years on investigative reporting at the Yomiuri Shimbun, particularly focusing on financial affairs and having uh, working with me many uh, Young people such as Jake, shall we say, as well within this situation. And since November of 2011, after the time when I uh, accused Mr. Watanabe and was dismissed from my post, I have been returned to the field of journalism. 
And in this time, this three and a half years since then, uh, despite being involved in many trials at the time, I have been very much focusing on going out into the field for journalism and using this as my base. Uh, last year, in 2014, I published a book called Shingari, and this was awarded the Kodansha Nonfiction Prize. And at the moment, or in the time since then, I have also been working on reporting or investigating the situation of, uh, within the electric appliance field of Japan, or the electric appliance companies, uh, looking at the case of the so-called isolation rooms uh, within the corporations such as Sony, and reporting this uh, in regular columns in magazines such as Factor. And on April the 9th, so next week, I will be publishing a book which is focusing on this, talking about the so-called isolation room of Sony, where people are brought ahead, put into the doghouse, shall we say. And within this time, reporting on and investigating the situation of uh, forced restruction within companies and large corporations such as Sony, there are three particular points I would like to share with you. The first being the fact that reporting on government offices or large corporations within Japan is becoming more and more difficult. The wall, the barrier against that is becoming thicker and thicker. The second point is the fact that journalists who are working out in the field directly on site are becoming fewer and fewer. So if I were to use today's keyword, which is freedom of the press, then I would say that the number of journalists who are not fearful of large companies and not fearful of their criticism or pressure and actually going out into the field to conduct investigative journalism on this are becoming very much fewer. And the third point is the fact that I believe media is becoming, or journalists are becoming almost um, now more insensitive to the large, very significant changes which are happening in large corporations or government offices. And one example of this, which is very much the case here in Japan and most likely often or very much also prevalent in other countries as well, is even if we're looking at cases of 10,000 or 20,000 people being fired in large cutoffs within a corporation, at the moment people don't even think anything of this anymore. However, in the editorial of the Nikkei Shinbun, the Nikkei newspaper of 20 years ago in 1995, the following was written. So this editorial was writing of the fact that uh, despite the fact that we need to have a managerial style which respects human beings with the time of the bubble and also the fall of the bubble following this, this using the name of having excess personnel in the past, there is not nearly enough regret for looking at the number of people who have had to be cut under this name. So this demonstrates the fact that the media, the uh, mainstream media at the time in Japan 20 years ago was very much critical of such large personnel cuts being made. And if we look at this situation and we take words which people such as, for example, uh, President Morita of Sony are always talking about managerial, uh, managerial style with human dignity or long-term perspective, for example, is this really the kind of situation that we have today in Japan? Uh, at one time, as a model for managerial style, uh, Sony uh, questioned the, uh, the then president of General Electric from the US, Mr. Welch, as one of the representatives of a good managerial style and said to him, well, what is a good style for this? And the response to this was a kind of company where the, the workers can every morning when they look at themselves in the mirror say, today I'm going to try my best and feel passionate about this. And it's for this reason that I take this up as an example and say, well, what has happened to corporations like Sony and these large Japanese companies today? And the next point which this brings me to also is those reporters who should be very much looking at these issues. Well, the fact that they are not aware of this, they're not noticing this at all. Those people, in, or Japanese people who are involved in the media, their position has very much changed in these past 20 years. The person who used to be standing by the side of someone who was crying is now stang, standing by the side of those in power. I believe that this Freedom of the Press Award, or a reward, uh, award for investigative journalism, which has been announced, is both a warning and also an encouragement to media in Japan in such a time. It is now 70 years since we can say the real form of journalism has begun, begun here in Japan. It is now 40 years since Mr. Takashi Tachikawa, uh, Tachibana sorry, here in this very club actually uh, had the press conference taking former Prime Minister Tanaka Kakue to, uh, to question. So I believe in such an international era that we are in today, it is very meaningful that an association such as the FCCJ, which can take an objective position, is uh, announcing such an award. And my first hope or thing that I'm very much calling for is for people who have taken a step away from the mainstream media or large uh, media outlets and so on to return to the field once again. 
such people who have worked in positions in the past, it's far too early for them to sit back and rely on their pensions. Yeah. I hope that they can once again return to the streets, to the field. I hope that they can return to their field of particular expertise, expertise and publish this somewhere. Yeah. Investigative journalism can be done even by one person alone. And if such people, such former journalists, could return and even write one article per year, this would mean that every day we would be able to read such uh, ex excellent investigative journalism throughout the year. <coughs> this is perhaps something which can only be done by veterans in the field. And this is, of course, not only limited to issues of uh, corruption within either the political or the uh, corporate field, but also looking at the fields of employment, medicine, education, environment, real estate, any kinds of topics such as this. Uh, Japanese people, it is being said, they are becoming further and further distant from the written word. And this is also one of the reasons for mainstream media to be uh, investing less and less into <coughs> such investigative journalism. And it's very much for this reason, in fact, that I really hope that veterans can show their, show, their, um, show their hand in this field. I don't want them just to be talking heads or commentators on the television. I, want, I really encourage them to really return to the field. And at the, very, at the same time, I also call on journalists or reporters with large media outlets to also not only write for their own companies, their own outlets, but also to publish their work in many different forms of media. Even Mr. Watanabe of the Yomiuri, also one day he was having a part-time job and learning the trade. And I very much call on journalists not only to situate themselves within the closed, exclusive, monopolized situation of the press clubs, but to also really contribute to society, to citizens as well. And I believe that this can also lead to a new kind of competition within investigative journalism. Of course, investigative journalism is something which can be isolating and many mistakes can be made along the way. However, competition very much makes such journalism stronger. I very much strongly believe that uh, such kinds of efforts going more towards investigative journalism can also be an encouragement against relying on uh, or dependence on, for example, corporations or government offices by the media and also encourage more uh, independent reporting. And I believe even when we look here at the membership of the S FCCJ, it is of course not a problem, but I very much hope that veterans can also, as I have encouraged and appealed for, return to the field and contribute in such a way. Thank you very much. Um, I would also like to encourage young journalists to join the fight and work hard on, as investigative journalists for low pay because God knows I'm getting old and we need some people to carry on the tradition. Before we go into questions, I want to explain something very briefly about this form that I hope everyone has. And so I won't go into the details uh, as we have distributed the information about the eligibility and so on for the awards, but I would like to say that listing that people who are involved in a particular organization are those eligible to be nominated is uh, one part of this, but I would also like to emphasize that it is not limited to this, also people who are not attached to such an outlet, for example, or also uh, general members of the public involved in such activities can also be uh, nominees for this prize award. And, and make nominations. And make nominations themselves also. You can nominate yourself. If you have written something great, or you think the magazine that you work for is great, you're working for Shukanto Yokezai, or you're working for Zaitan, or you're working for Boonshun, and you think we, we, our, our organization really is awesome, go ahead. You, you, can, you can nominate yourself. Go on, Yonaku. And now we'll open the floor to questions. Mm. Good afternoon. I am a freelance journalist. My name is Tanaka Ryusaku. I have a question for Mr. Kiyotake. I also believe that, and I have for the past 30 years very much believed that you need to write articles yourself by going out on the street and reporting yourself. But when we look at the fall in Japan's rankings on uh, freedom of the press and so on, I believe that it is not only as a result of control by the Abe government, but also the fact that the media themselves is stopping to do this, is not going out there and not doing this themselves. And for freelancers, of course, it is an issue not only of limitations being put on them, but also financial considerations, meaning that it is very difficult to perhaps pursue investigative journalism in a full way. I believe that we are now facing what is the most critical, dangerous stage for Japanese journalism in this respect, and I would like to ask what you believe we can do to overcome this. However, while the mainstream media might just go past an issue and not pay attention to this, for the freelancers this is difficult. They may stop and really pay attention. And I believe it is important, and this is, of course, not only for investigative journalism, but for all journalists to return to the question of why they became a journalist in the first place, why they entered this field, what is the purpose of this. And I believe that the answer to this for everybody would be to bring something to light that if they were not there themselves, if they were not conducting this reporting, would not have come out. And I believe that for all journalists, it is very much a desire to even once in your lifetime come up with something to say, well, this is my life work, this is the article that I was, I was meant to write. 
And as I mentioned before, but it is actually very few journalists or particularly newspaper reporters in Japan who, after retirement at the age of 60, continue to put work out in books and journals and so on. It's very rare. And perhaps I, I won't necessarily use the word samurai, but I believe this is really the spirit that should be encouraged. And if not, then it should be recognized or they should accept the fact that they are just standing with the authority. And I believe one more point is to use such opportunities as we have here or also the award which has been announced to really uh, inspire or encourage young people to bring different uh, things for them to pay attention to. And I think if, if we call upon them and, and criticize them for what they are perhaps not achieving, it's something that can really make them pay attention. HKW Media Report. Hello, my name is Watanabe. I would like to ask a question. We have, of course, the five categories of awards which are listed here. I would like to ask if they will be announced, uh, awarded every year, or if it will be only when somebody eligible <coughs> is found. And I would also like to ask the contents of what will be given to the awardees, if it will be a certification or if there will be some kind of benefit given to them, whether this is financial or in uh, some kind of a membership to the club and so on. So I will reply as one of the, the members of this, uh, shall we say, poor organization. Um. Some of these awards will not be given every year because it, 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 there won't be every year, there may not be someone who dies in the line of duty as a reporter relating to Japan. Um, most of them we plan to give every year. It, it's going to have to be on a case by case with some of these. Personally, I really hope we're not giving a Fallen Hero Award every year. The, uh, basically, the award is a certificate, a one-year membership, a free membership to the FCCJ, and we are trying to negotiate with a couple companies to see if they might be interested in um, donating cameras or some other prizes that we can give to the people. However, in this current climate where um, freedom of the press is under challenge, uh, most people don't want to be seen with anything that might uh, necessarily be involving criticizing uh, the powers that be. And um, Arapo, thank you very much for the question. That was a really good question. Um, fortunately, we are not close to being bankrupt, so we are safe. We're okay financially. But uh, yes, it is. <laughs> um, we are going to be just giving uh, certificates uh, this year. Hopefully, we will get some sort of donations uh, in the following year. Uh, no, nothing financial. Uh, we don't plan anything financial at this point. Okay, I'm going to call on a gentleman over there, and then I'll, I'll go in order until we get to f about 4 o'clock, and then I've got to <coughs> go some time. Thank you very much, and I'm very impressed by the work of the club and, you know, spreading the freedom of the press. My question is, the phenomena, phenomena you're talking about, do you think it's only in your field or it's a global issue? But I'm trying to say globalization changed everything. Before, it was Japan. Yumuri in Japan. Now, any magazine is a newspaper on the internet everywhere, okay? And so many powers are working on this. <coughs> and with this, you know, most of the newspaper depend on their advertisement to make the money, okay? And these advertisements depend on companies to pay them. What I'm trying to say, this globalization created a lot of inequality that there are some who are very powerful and they can't put money in everywhere and they can play with politicians, with the journalists, with everything. You don't think this is a, a global challenge and we have to think about it globally. <coughs> How to deal with these challenges? Is there any way to create some new ways of regulating things which are we are so deregulated thank you well it's a, it's a very good question i mean one of the problems that has always been with with the business news mo with with the news models that we have in in japan and in the world is that it, it relies on advertising to sustain the business model and when you write articles that piss off your advertisers um, you're going to lose that revenue so how do you balance the problem of running a newspaper or, or, uh, or a magazine and um, dealing with court costs and dealing with advertisers and being um, a straightforward uh, news organization? Uh, and it's not a problem that's unique to Japan. Um, I, I would say that um, there have been some interesting ways of dealing with this in the United States. 
Um, I, I do think that we're all aware in Japan that the relationship between advertisers and, and newspapers and coverage of troubling events is, is very pronounced. Um, it's well known that Tokyo Electric Power Company has an advertising budget of like $16 million a year, even though they are a monopoly, meaning they don't have any competitors, so why do they need advertisers? But it certainly is a, a, a great whip, um, and it, with Ame Tomuchi, it's the whip and the candy to um, make, rep make reporters and the media not report things that are unfavorable to them, and that has worked for many, many years. Um, one solution, when it's not really, I mean, I'm just to answer your question is, in the United States, you have ProPublica and, and the Center for Public Integrity. These are organizations that are nonprofit newsrooms. They are funded by donations. They do not take advertising. They distribute their materials to newspapers and other magazines. Um, and therefore, while they, they, they may have some bias towards the people who are making donations to them, they're not relying on advertisements, and um, thus they are primarily centered on doing investigative journalism. Um, we are out of time. I'm sorry for the, for the long answers. Um, uh, one more question? OK. Can I, can I just add one quick thing about ProPublica? Yeah. Um, they, they won the Pulitzer Prize in 2011. So they're very highly respected. And they have about 27 foundations backing them. Hello, I'm an associate member. I would like to ask whether what the situation within higher education in Japan in regards to journalism is, if there are schools such as Columbia School of Journalism which are conducting such kind of activities here in Japan. There are many uh, courses or uh, you know, lectures and theories and so on on journalism or media within Japan. And many of the positions teaching in such schools are filled by, for example, former department heads of mainstream media outlets. And there are also many seminars held about how to get a job within such a mainstream media outlet. And so many of those who do enter the field have undergone such kind of education about how to pass the exams to get into such media positions. However, I'm not sure whether this is actually connected to the issues of the spiritual quality of journalism. And so I believe that there is perhaps, we could say, an increase in more intelligent people. However, if we could say there is at the same time a decrease in the number of people who are very much wanting to go into in investigative journalism. Um, I, I would also like to add that I took one of those seminars to enter the Yomiti newspaper, like the, they, they, to pass the exam. So they, they do exist. Many, news, many universities have shimbun gakka. They have like departments of newspaper journalism. Um, and there you can get journalism degrees. However, I was told by people in human resources that they actually don't like to take people with journalism degrees because they're too hard to train. Um, thank you very much for coming here. We have a gift for the guest for coming today. Um, yep. Hi. Um, this is a one-year honorary membership to the FCCJ, which will allow you to access our wonderful library full of many publications doing great investigative journalism, including FACTA's I-10, Weekly Toyo Keizai, and also dine at our wonderful bar. Are you Mr. Taki? Thank you very much for coming. Please nominate yourselves or someone you think has done worthy journalism, and uh, we look forward to announcing the results on May 3rd.